As we come up to four o'clock on this Wednesday, I can tell you it is September 7th, but it feels like early August outside. Another heat record broken today, and you can add to those hot temperatures the haze that is in the sky as well. That smoke moving in across western Colorado down to the Front Range. And again, the heat was causing some schools to close early and cooling centers to open up around the city of Denver. Those cooling centers are open around the metro area during regular business hours today and tomorrow because the heat's not going away tomorrow. Public libraries are also available if you're trying to beat the heat. A reminder, just make sure you never leave your kids, your pets in the car even for a second and check on those family members and maybe neighbors that live nearby that could use some help. Kathy's joining us now to talk about this heat and uh, we're right up against 100 degrees right now, Kath. It's crazy. I mean, I know it is summertime, but my goodness, this is extreme heat for September. As we look live now at downtown Denver, you can just see that smoke and haze that is covering the city. 99 degrees that breaks the old record of 94, but triple digit highs just to the north and east of us. Sydney, Sterling, Ogallala, Ray, look at Grand Junction, Moab, Eastern Utah dealing with the heat wave as well. This record we broke today, second day in a row. The old record was 95 set back in 2013. I think we're going to break another record tomorrow. It's dangerous, the heat. And to have heat this many days, these record high temperatures in September, when we should have an average high of about 83, we have heat advisories posted through tonight and again tomorrow. As we can see, temperatures soar to over 100 degrees with poor air quality. And we're not the only area dealing with the oppressive heat. Areas in the Pacific Northwest, West, and Southwestern U.S., temperatures over 100 degrees. Factor in the smoke and haze from wildfires burning outside our state and we have poor air quality yet again tonight. We have the humidity values down, so we're also talking about elevated fire danger, monitoring the wind very closely out there and only isolated thunderstorms in the four corners area to bring any amount of moisture. A hot night coming up, but there is relief on the way. That's right. Cooler weather and even some rain. I'm going to break it all down in our main weather segment coming up in just a few minutes. Disturbing video was released today by the lawyer representing an inmate at the Boulder County Jail. The inmate is now suing three Boulder County Sheriff's Department deputies for allegedly beating him during what the lawyer describes as a horrifying attack. We want to warn people, though, this body camera video that you're about to see shows the deputy actually hitting and kicking the inmate. Here with more is 9 News crime and justice reporter Matt Jablo. I have been a lawyer for over 45 years and I've never seen a video like that. That video was recorded five months ago in the Boulder County Jail. Body camera video showing two Boulder County Sheriff's deputies walking into an isolation room at the jail and then punching and kicking an inmate, Kyle Terman. I was horrified. Scott Jordan is Terman's attorney. He says Terman has been in the Boulder Jail since late last year first on a few misdemeanor charges. He got involved in shoplifting. And then for allegedly spitting on a sheriff's deputy in the jail, which is a felony. Jurdam says his client suffers from serious mental health issues that the jail knew about but did not treat. Delusions. He's exhibited bizarre behaviors. And that earlier this year, Terman was placed in the jail's isolation unit after showing signs of aggressive and unpredictable behavior. When he comes out of his cell, they take him to that little room that you see him in in the video. On April 4th, according to the lawsuit filed against the sheriff's department, Terman allegedly pointed his finger at one of the deputies and spat at the glass. And a few seconds later, the beating began. An altercation that never needed to occur, never should have occurred. And if he was so bad that that needed to occur, he was bad enough that he should have been taken on a 72-hour hold and gotten treatment rather than gotten a beating. In a written statement, a spokesperson for the Boulder Sheriff's Department said they had not yet been served with the lawsuit. The spokesperson did say that the incident is now the subject of an internal investigation, the outcome of which will determine what actions, if any, need to be taken. Kim and Tom. And refresh my memory, you said this. When did this happen? April 4th of this year, okay. about five months ago. And we're just hearing now because of the lawsuit. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Five officers from the Texas Department of Public Safety are now under investigation for their role in the response to the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. Now, these are officers with the state. Their department has called the response to the May 24th shooting at the school an abject failure. Well, now they're looking specifically at the actions of five of their own officers who responded to that scene. Two of those officers have already been suspended with pay pending the outcome of the investigation. 
In all, more than 370 law enforcement officers from multiple agencies did respond to that scene, yet it took over an hour before they ultimately confronted and killed the shooter. 19 students and two teachers died in that shooting. New research shows Iran poses a significant cyber threat. According to tech security firm Mandiant, Iranian hackers have been trying to break into email accounts of U.S. officials who are involved in Iranian policies. The report also accuses this group of attempting to breach the cell phones of Iranian dissidents. Mandiant says between March and June of 2021, the hackers had access to a compromised email account of someone at a Washington, D.C. think tank and used it to target government officials working on Middle Eastern policies. There's no word on which agency was involved or if the hacking attempts were prevented. The National Security Council has not commented. The Washington Post reports agents who searched Mar-a-Lago last month found a document describing a foreign government's military defenses, including its nuclear capabilities. Of course, that report highlights the concerns of many American intelligence officials about the classified material that Donald Trump did have in his home in Florida. Now, the Post did not identify the particular foreign government that was named in the document, while also reporting that some of the seized documents detail top-secret American operations, ones that are so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. Only the president and some cabinet members or a near-cabinet-level official could authorize other officials to know the details.